three out of four businesses fail in the first five years, and 90% of those failures are due to poor management. But here to stop the rot a mad butcher Peter Leach and his chief executive Michael Morton. With his flair for marketing and promotion, Peter can sell ice to Eskimos, while Mike is the numbers man with a sharp eye for the bottom line. A dream team for business nightmares. Tonight, could the racetrack be a fast track to riches for a struggling Kiwi inventor? If your units here are going to be half the price, the market is big. Just got to make it work now. And Peter and Mike send in a spy to see if a beauty clinic boss is telling porkies. You're calling someone else in and you're sitting here with you on your backside. Cold hard evidence. Tough talking, no excuses, tonight on A Mad Business. In central Christchurch, New Zealand, an inventive chap with a famous name is fighting hard to keep a small company going. Meet Rod Stewart. Tropical is a manufacturing business. We work with thermoelectric refrigeration. We make small water coolers, 12 volt refrigeration units, and we do specialised work with the technology we work with. Back in 1994, I started manufacturing our first water cooler. And eventually I developed the Tropical Water Cooler, which we've been selling successfully for about eight years. The water cooler market can be selling 100 a month and then the first southerly front comes through and it's like flicking a light switch. It was minus two outside this morning. Selling fridges to Eskimos comes to mind. I'd like to see Tropical to a large extent running without me because my, my greatest passion is inventing and developing new products. Rod's not short of good ideas. Selling them is the problem. This was a trial product for selling chocolate bars on the counter of dairies. This is a blood and medical transport refrigerator which we have built for the New Zealand Army. We built 19 of these. With most of his inventions gathering dust, the water coolers are the one thing keeping the business afloat but they're fighting the tide of cheap imports. The biggest battle I've had over the last few years has been the competition from Asian manufactured products. I've been watching my sales drop, my profitability get squeezed, and it's got to a point now where I feel that the company badly needs to change if it's going to survive. You have the mail full of statements, you're late paying your suppliers, you end up paying your staff on credit cards, you end up not paying yourself, and then you go for two or three days without a sale. Depression can set in. And if things don't look up soon... I may as well just close the business down and go and get a job. Really, when I consider that option, it really makes me want to fight even harder to keep it going. Rod's business is going down the gurgler. So the call's gone out to two champions of industry. Peter and Mike know a few things about battling the odds and coming up trumps. G'day, mate. I'm Peter. Pleased this to meet you, Peter. Michael. Nice right. to meet you. What do you actually do here, mate? Well, I work with a technology called thermoelectric refrigeration. I know what that means. What he does, Michael, he uses electricity to make things hot or cold. What do you do? Swallow a dictionary on the way here? I've been researching this project, Michael. I've got a little demonstration unit I'd like to show you. Put a finger each on there. You're going to get left at shock. <laughs> Come on, give it full burst now. I like it, I'll buy it. It's cold, mate, doesn't it? Is that just one of those? Yeah. When you pass a DC current through here, you'll get a heat transfer from one side to the other, so one side gets cold and the other side gets hot. So what applications do you apply this to? We make uh, little refrigeration units like this, and we also manufacture little mini water coolers, bench top water coolers, and we do a lot of specialised equipment. The water coolers have been Tropical's main source of income for many years, but its days are numbered, I think. Why is that? Asian imports. Mate, you're not going to roll over for the Asian imports, eh? That's like saying the mad butcher should have rolled over 40 years ago for the supermarket. What did I do? Supermarkets come on the market and I fought back. I need to get 2 99 including GST, fully kitted out. And what's a cheap import one with? Oh, under 100. Yeah. So your three times is there? Three times the retail price at the moment. Is their product any good? Absolute rubbish. One year and it'll be in the landfill, most of them I've seen. So what else is new? Well, with Rod, you never know. What the hell is this, mate? This is basically an electric hot water bottle. 
It's only at prototype stage, but it has a temperature range of 0 to 40 degrees Celsius, and Rod plans to make it portable. With this device, I can heat or cool any part of your body you want. How accurate is the thermostat in it? We can do it down to plus or minus 0.1 of a degree. Dial up exactly the temperature you want. And so it's just using the same water each time? It's pumping it through a liquid heat exchanger here, through the pad, and then back in to the reservoir again. And like all good inventors, Rod has some extra special projects under wraps. Well, you can't come into this room because we're down to do something top secret, but old Michael can't even get his jacket on. <laughs> so it is completely silent like this? Absolutely dead silent. So I've been working on this for years. The market's huge, mate. Yeah, I need to take it further. Mate, he certainly knows how to invent things. He's just not commercially minded, is he? No, look, he, he's an ideas guy. He's developed all these um, ideas, but he's never ever taken anything through to market. That's where we can help him, because we're the guys that have made the humble sausage famous, and we can use that experience to help him with his invention to put it on a pedestal. What he needs to do, though, is that to broaden his appeal. You know, he, he had the water coolers, he put all the effort into that. It's one stream. You know, any business needs to have more than one stream going. So if one part of the business slows down, you can move on to the next part of it. Michael, what about this bloody body I'm a water bottle? I don't think there's much merit in that, is there? Oh, no, look, I, I disagree. I think it's got a lot of applications out there in the marketplace. From a medical point of view, physiotherapy, you know, I'm just thinking of all these processes that you could use that one little unit for that he hasn't touched on, but he's got to be disciplined enough to get it through to the next stage. Because I think he starts things, and when he hits a brick wall, he stops because he's doing what he loves doing, which is inventing things. It's full of enthusiasm. It's if we can channel that enthusiasm into making money. Wanting to get into the lucrative beauty market and new to business, Denise Rogers bought a small beauty clinic in Manarewa, New Zealand. When I bought the business, it really had got to the stage where it was time for a fresh look and needed to be really dragged up into the next decade. So Denise gave the place a spruce up and waited for the customers to roll in. I didn't realise how hard it would be. I didn't realise how much it would cost um, or how long it would take. It is really draining and it is really demanding time-wise. And what she hasn't had time for is rebranding the business. Right from the start, I was always going to change the name. It's, in my mind, was always very old-fashioned and very mumsy, and that isn't the image that I wanted to portray. I'm a registered nurse, so I'm really keen to somehow to incorporate women's health into it so that it becomes a place of wellness, because beauty therapy is about making people feel better and walking out of here uh, feeling like, even if it's been painful, feeling better about themselves. But after 15 months in business, it's Denise who's feeling the pain. Manarewa may not be Auckland's most glamorous suburb, but where are the customers? There's plenty of women out there who live in this area with money, and men. At the moment, they go outside of the area, a lot of them, to get this type of service, and they don't know that we're here. They don't know that there's any beauty therapy places here. Now the Mad Butcher and Michael Morton won't win any beauty contests, but they're no slouches in the business stakes, so their help could be a beautiful thing. Oh, here we are, mate. The English Rose Beauty Therapy here at Manuera, Michael. The first thing you notice, the sign is absolutely filthy. The sunbed sign is using as a doorstop. You know, you're not going to advertise sunbeds. It should be out on the footpath here. Don't tell me, mate. I know that. Let's go and tell the lady. Come on. Here's the boss lady. Hello there, how are you? Hi, this is Michael. Things. Hi Michael. Got a dirty sign on the roof down there. Yep. Can't read it, it's so dirty. And why would you have the sunbed sign as a doorstop? I couldn't work that out. Because if we don't have it as a doorstop, the door doesn't stay open at this point. They've got so many doorstop clips down at Mitre 10, they yep. sell them for about $3 yep, dollars right. each. You've got what appears to be a very clean, well-presented business. It smells it does nice smell too. nice, yes, it mm. does smell nice. Mm -hmm. You take us through and show us around, eh? Okay. And this is our spa room. Okay. 
very nice room too, I might add. Then we've got two other therapy rooms for waxing and tinting, two sunbed rooms, and then another room which we have for sauna and spray tanning. It's the sunbeds and the sauna room, they look at expensive equipment. No, it is, is expensive business. Is it owned, yeah. rented, what do the you The sunbeds are owned. The sauna is on a, uh, a lease, basically. Actually, you look better in those glasses. Leave them on, mate. I want to see what this feels like. Everybody always moans, it can't be that hard. Ooh, doesn't hurt so far. Must be right. Oh. <laughs> Coming up, the butcher is beautified but plots to fully test Denise's service by sending in a spy. I think you've gone far enough, Michael. We're looking for a mystery shopper. And inventor Rod Stewart gets more than just good advice. Very happy, happy guys in my life at the moment, actually. <laughs> well, you should be your 10 grand richer. <laughs> <laughs> Peter and Mike have taken on the case of a Manukau City beauty clinic with nice facilities but no customers. So time for some relaxation therapy and some tough questions. Well here we are Michael in the workers area and Denise it's time you gave me a bit of a manicure to be fair. Here. Where do you get your customers from? I guess our customers come from the Greater Manurewa area. Your location of the building now, what, what's the strengths of where you are? It's a nice size area. It's got lots of parking behind it. Yeah, weaknesses? Uh, that it's upstairs, so it's a little bit um, off the beaten track as far as visibility goes. How do you attract your clients? Um, uh, w word of mouth. A lot of it's word of mouth. And some of the advertising that we do. Can you not work and talk at the same time? I'm not very good at it, am no. I? No. I must, be part, I must be mean. <laughs> They're not good at it either. I cut it out. <laughs> There'll be a couple of other things that we'd like to ask you, but we can sort of come to that at a later later okay. time. I can email you those type of okay. um, those type of things. But um, while we're here, there's a couple of things that I wouldn't mind doing, to be fair. Well, that's nice. Thank you very much. <laughs> Come back, Pete. Well, Michael, the signage is disgusting. We need to improve that. The appearance of the place outside is not a good look, to be fair. I think first impressions count for a beauty therapist. You know, it's all about impression and, and how things look. She also needs more customers, so we need to look at the marketing. We need to market to people that got high disposable income, the people who've got some money to spend. This type of business is all about service. We need to test her service somehow. You should go and get wax, mate. I'm not getting wax. We'll get a mystery shopper, mate. Mate, I think she'd run out of wax if she tried to do you. Oh, don't be <laughs> stupid. The butcher's cunning plan is to send someone in with a hidden camera. Well, Michael, what sort of qualifications do you think it takes to be a mystery shopper? I would suggest a high education. Have you got UE or school certificate there? Mm, yep. She's got the qualifications for the job, Michael. One moment. Don't be so hasty. Are you sneaky? Um, yeah. I think you've gone far enough, Michael. We're looking for a mystery shopper. Yes, no, I'm happy. Then, my dear, you've got the job. Thanks. Thanks. Back in Christchurch, inventor Rod Stewart is busy modifying his portable electric hot water bottle. The prototype was gathering dust in a bottom drawer, but Mike Morton, who's a keen motor racer, has had a brilliant idea himself. Rod's invention can be made to cool as well as heat and could be ideal for sweaty drivers. This is a thing I believe that your thermo unit's got an application for. Yeah. Inside the race car, the cockpit itself gets about 65 degrees and then you have your full race suit, which is all flame-proof and stuff on as well. So overheating the poor driver is a real problem and the only way to cool them down currently is a modified chilli bin full of ice. Basically, you plug this in to the unit yeah. and it pumps through our suit to keep us cool. This is not a backyard type version, this is currently the best that's out there in the market. And frankly it's far from perfect. As the ice thaws, the water pumped around the driver heats up and the unit's bulky. You've got about 10 litres of water in there, I'd say it'd be roughly around 12 kgs. Okay. What's your unit weigh? Looking like 4 or 5 kilos at the yeah. moment. Well that's a big saving because weight in a race car is important to keep okay. it down. One of the other problems Rod is that this current unit's expensive, it retails around two, two and a half thousand dollars. What is yours going to cost? It's going to end up uh, retailing less than a thousand, the way it's looking. That's a good saving. If your units here are going to be half the price, the third of the price, the market is big. Just got to make it work now. 
rod could well be onto a winner, but before inventions can hit the market, they need a lot of time and money, two commodities that he's in short supply of. Hopefully Peter and Mike have some other bright ideas. We have to get your inventor's head out and get a commercial head going as well. Yes. Because your inventor's head's not about making money, it's inventing stuff. We came through your factory, you had some magnificent products, but they're not commercial. Your so-called electric hot water bottle that you had, we think it's got some great applications. It's changed a bit from last time, eh? Yeah. Well, There's not as much wood and bits hanging off it. You guys have been a real motivation. Um, this actually sat in a box, the original first prototype, and it got dragged out for the television programme. Yep. This is nowhere near the finished product. It's How good. many applications can this product do? Well, I've made a small list. Cooling racing car drivers was yep. your idea. Post-op comfort, cooling or heating people uh, working in temperature extremes, like people working up power poles. Or so it's a portable device. So we've got to put it on a bit of a uh, Weight Watchers program yet. But yeah. <laughs> Peter knows about that, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, please, well, have a look at yourself. Have a look at yourself. Seven years at Weight Watchers, what good's it done you? Get back to the business. The more I look at this product, the more markets I see. It excites me. What do you require, Rod, to make this work? Uh, the biggest thing I require is some time and a small amount of money to get it to a point where it is actually proven to be a commercial product. What do you call a small amount of money? Okay, step one would be to do a prototype which might cost $10,000. You're looking for a capital injection of $10,000 straight away. To you? get it to the point where I can say, yes, this is a product that we can go with. Well, we can't help you with your time, but Michael, we may be able to help him with the $10,000. I think so, Peter. Well, that sounds very generous and very flattered. <laughs> I feel that one of the things that holds inventors back is having to feed themselves yep. and find the time. Like when I spend, it might have only spent like $1,000 getting this made, but I probably spent 30 or 40 hours working on it. That's working for no wages and spending all your yeah, cash on we've parts. Had, we've had just obsolete. Hey, so, hey, hey, let's forget all the bullshit and let's get to the nitty gritty. Okay. Well, we yeah. want to see you go ahead, mate. Right. We like you. We like your inventions, don't we, yeah. Michael? We'll give you the money to get it to the prototype stage. Okay. We're okay. not interested in the partnership or anything like that at this stage. Okay. If we get it to a prototype stage and you need a partner to come on board, then let's talk about it in the nitty gritties of what's oh, involved or something fantastic. else. But Absolutely the 10 grand's fantastic. unencumbered. It'll be yours. Um, to have a go at it. If you make money at it, pass back. But that's not all. Michael's also been thinking about the product that Tropical depends on for its cash flow. The water coolers, what we need to do is find a point of difference for your water coolers, and that might be the quality. So we might be looking at the five-year guarantee. One of the ways of selling the water coolers, I think, is direct marketing. So maybe an 0800 number. There's a, a program, for example, on News Talk ZB where people ring up and talk about their products that's available nationwide. I think we'd do that as a bit of a trial because it's free to do. Yep. If it worked, then I think what we'd do is we'd go and buy some radio. I like your idea of doing the radio station. What about ad commercials on the TV? Wait a minute, you said you were short of money before. We haven't got a bloody billion dollars to spend, you know. <laughs> we have if we sell a few. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> well, look at it. Very happy to be have you guys in my life at the moment, actually. Well, you should be. You're 10 grand richer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, you won't regret throwing money at this product, I'm sure of it. Well, we've got that Good on, on you, mate. <laughs> it's just so flattering that they're prepared to give me some money to take it to the next level. Now it looks like we're headlong into developing a brand new product for New Zealand. Coming up, the real cost of Peter and Mike's investment in Rod's hot water bottle invention. You love them so much, you sign the cheque. $11,250 cash, mate. I hope he makes us some money. I hope so. The job could be gone. And the beauty clinic spy comes in from the cold. We sent in a mystery shopper. Cold hard evidence. <laughs> Rod Stewart's small manufacturing company, Tropical, is in danger of falling over. But Peter and Mike see huge potential in Rod's electric hot water bottle invention, and they've put their money where their considerable mouths are. Well, here we are, Mike. Here's the cheque. 11250 for Tropical in Christchurch. You love them so much, you sign the cheque. $11,250 cash, mate. I hope he makes us some money. I hope so. The job could be gone. So Rod's got some cash to continue developing his prototype, but he's still got to figure out how to sell his water cooler stock 
And now he's got the butcher in his ear. You've got to remember, I've got money invested in your business. And mate, you've got to keep me informed how that meeting goes. In Otago, mate! <laughs> Rod believes his electric hot water bottle has a future in medicine and hopes to interest the Otago University School of Physiotherapy. Now this is very much a prototype, so don't base your judgments on what it looks like. The guy's keen on doing some clinical trials and they're also going to give me a medical appraisal on the product. It looks like I'm going to be a busy boy in going back and designing the Mark III prototype. Meanwhile, the spy sent in to secretly film at the English Rose Beauty Clinic has filed her report. OK, here's our little mystery shopper girl. See how she did. Going up the stairs. Hey there, I have an appointment at 11. Hi, I'm down. How are you? Good, thanks. Well, that's a nice friendly welcome, so she should be happy with that. Who's this? This is a nail technician. Oh, they must call some in. Need to talk to them about that. Why don't they do it themselves? And Mike is surprised to learn that owner Denise is bringing in an outside contractor, an extra expense they didn't know about. Well, g'day, good to see you. Welcome to Sausage Heaven. Do you want the good news or the bad news? We sent in a mystery shopper, sent a hidden camera in. Cold hard evidence. And you come out looking pretty good. There it is. Okay. You come out good, the service was good, all of that was positive, okay? okay. The only issue was you, you don't have a nail technician on site that you have to contact That's the nail right. technician. Yep. Yep. You're calling someone else in and you're sitting there with you on your backside. Yeah. Nail technician, I think, is obviously part of it. Right. You, one of your girls need to train in it. Right. A couple of jobs we gave you to do, you've got to sort those out. Right. No doubt you would have done them, clean the sign, etc. and that. I'm doing that today. You've had two weeks. Get up and clean that sign. Peter brought up on the shelves that some of the shelves looked a little bit empty yes, and so yep. forth. Did yep. you talk to the suppliers? Um, I didn't talk to the um, suppliers about that. How long does it take? A bit of urgency. Yep. Do you want help or not? Yes, I do. Look, Denise, the problem is we've got to get more people into your store. We asked you to come up with some special offers. Yep. Have you done that? I have done that. Well, oh, she's done something, Michael. <laughs> oh, that's good. Those are just some ideas. Here's a crazy deal. Pamper yourself with our customer Radiance Facial for only $45 and receive a 50% discount off all your waxing before experience 30 minutes of total indulgence. Now that sounds good, Michael. Yes, but it could be better. And Mike decides to work on the layout himself. You talked about new signage, new name. How's that going? The logo is pretty much finished. Yep. I now just have to decide what is the most effective way to use it and where to put the signs, I guess. Doesn't grab me. Yeah, I'm not too excited. You've got to remember, this logo is going to be the same thing that we're using in flyers, the outside of the shop, so it needs to have something that catches your eye. Yeah. The line's horrible, it's boring, it's poo's brown. I mean, you know. Michael, I'd like us to come up with our own, you know, one, beauty sensations. Well, Denise, it's been nice to meet you. In actual fact, it's meet to please you. <laughs> In Christchurch, Rod's working hard on his electric hot water bottle invention, while also trying to keep his company going. Manufacturing water coolers and selling them wholesale has been Tropical's bread and butter for many years, but cheap imports have ruined the business. Selling direct to the public may be the only way to survive. The margins aren't there to have wholesale and then retail sales, so we're going direct. It's the lull before the storm. I really am about to start my first direct marketing. The website goes up in about a week's time. I'm a little nervous about going into direct marketing. Instead of packing down a pallet of 50 water coolers, I've got to sell them one by one and process each payment. So. I get the feeling that the office is going to load up a lot more. Rod set up a website, but he's also going to need some serious marketing to drive sales. Yeah, Mike's quite keen to get me doing a bit of radio advertising. He made me ring up and do a live ad on uh, News Talk ZB. A little slot they have for New Zealand manufacturers. Yes, it's Rod here from Tropical Wee On Air. I was as nervous as hell. But what was kind of cool, I was, I was only on for two minutes, I gave my website and my 0800 number and we've got a special deal going down, 299 for a water cooler and I got responses from both. So the water cooler business could be back on the boil, giving Rod time to devote to the tricky job of trying to get a patent for his electric hot water bottle. 
and yes it does look very good for certain aspects of the product being painted in. A lot of money when you start getting into patents, there's actually quite a lot of work involved in describing the product. I'm a little bit nervous because I don't have a lot of money for this sort of thing. It's important I think if I want to get an investor involved in this project. Investors like intellectual property and it also gives me the freedom for one year from doing the patent pending to work on the product knowing that if I get there no one else is going to be able to follow along behind me. After a bollocking from Peter and Mike, Denise has finally got stuck in and brightened up the entrance to her beauty clinic. She's also organised more stock so her shelves look nice and full, and following the hidden camera revelation that she gets an outside contractor in to do nails, she's now got her own staff member trained to do the job. Mike's been busy on the new signage and flyers, but he knows good design isn't enough. The marketing has to reach the people the clinic needs to attract, locals with disposable income. It's no good doing a blanket approach. Yep. That will be good later on, but we need to sort of isolate what we're looking at doing and target specific areas. So we don't believe they're your customers. Yep. But you know, when we go up here, this way, sort of here, yep. these are the people that we, I think we yep. should be targeting. And the idea of doing it in a small cluster like that is we can control how many we're doing, so you're not going to get inundated with people, and we're going to be able to measure the response. We're yep. going to know how many we handed out, yep. how many come back, and that's what's going to work. And from a cost point of view, it's cost effective right. as well as there's low risk. Got your revised offers, I think they're a lot better. You're showing examples now for pricing. People know that you know what they normally pay for leg wax or dare I say it a bazillion um, <laughs> and therefore you know the price is now obviously yeah. look yeah. very attractive yeah. for that. Do you, do you have any idea what you pay for a bazillion Peter? No I got it uh, free, she done it free for me oh. to be fair. Oh, oh, it's good. It was very good though and I enjoyed the massage Michael. The massage was very nice. With the bazillion? <laughs> Afterwards. Oh. Oh, okay. Thank you. Moving on, quickly. Well, I don't think this is your target market, Denise. What do you think, Michael? No, I think we can aim a bit higher than this here. Well, Denise, this is your target market, and I'll tell you what, even the sun is shining down on us over here. We've got a limited marketing spend, we've got a tight budget, we've got to do some targeted marketing. These are the people we want to talk to. Let's go for it. Coming up, a shock for Rod's electric hot water bottle invention. The lawyers found a company who are making exactly the same product. But the signs are good for Denise's beauty clinic. I think it's really exciting for me to move it to what is essentially me, which is beauty sensations. <laughs> With financial backing from the Mad Butcher Boys, Rod Stewart is modifying his electric hot water bottle to cool down racing car drivers. His core business is still producing top quality water coolers in a market swamped by cheap imports. Rod's got a web shop online and has given Radio Tour back a go. And his next marketing move is... Uh... Well... Actually, there isn't one. I'm a little bit disappointed with the retailing of the water coolers this summer. I guess part of it is that I'm not a very good retailer, but the biggest thing I did marketing-wise was set up a really good website with a web shop. I really didn't get stuck into the radio advertising. Rod did look into hiring someone else to do the water cooler marketing, but... He said that I would need to spend about 25000 to do a proper marketing campaign, and the margins just aren't in the product to allow that to happen. Business is bleak and the prospects are worse. The cash flow has been quite difficult to manage this summer. There's not going to be any fat to work on and we're going into winter, which is traditionally a quiet period. I've fallen behind with inland revenue payments and fighting hard and I really want to try and make the company get through this period and on to the next new products. There's been a big curveball come with the electric hot water bottle. The lawyers did an initial search and found a company in America who are making exactly the same product and have patents in Europe and America for it. The Mad Butchers invested 10 grand in Rod's invention, so the boys are quickly on the case. We got here as soon as we could, mate. We heard there was a problem and we're here. Good on you, Peter. Where are we up to? 
Well, we had a bit of a setback a couple of weeks ago with this one. Found an American company that's making an almost identical product, and they got patents in Europe and America. Don't worry about that, mate. Michael's done a lot of work. It's my understanding that patents only overseas in America, etc. As long as we get one sold in New Zealand or Australia, then they can't stop us from selling them in that market. We can't get the patent, but we can sell the product. So what you need to do, mate, you need to get off your ass and start getting one out to market. You can't sell it, mate, if you haven't got it. Rod does have his water coolers to sell, but his new marketing efforts have pretty much fizzled out. I told you last time I was here, push the retailing. What's happening? The market has been swamped with Asian imports this summer, Peter. I saw one down at the local supermarket for $89, including GST, and that's after the supermarket made their profit. Well, the reality is we can buy them cheaper than you can make them. We just can't compete with that. So there comes a time in business when you've got to throw the towel in, like a boxer. So what are we going to do with the ones we've got in stock? I've been negotiating with Just Water, lowered the price a little bit, and they've agreed to buy them. So we're going to do a round off with all the stock. So we're out of the water business. However, it's full steam ahead in the electric hot water bottle racing driver cooler business, once Rod fine-tunes the prototype. Righto, mate. You're going to feel the fruits yep. of our investment, mate. Hook Put you up here. Yep. Pump this in, you can be able to feel the love flowing through you. Mate, I can feel the chill coming already. Done the improvements to this, it's now cranked up. We're getting it better, we're nearly there. And just to speed things up, there's another mad butcher check in the mail. Throws a bit more cash at it, because we believe in the idea. It's just about saying we believe in you, which is scary to be fair. <laughs> we believe in it. And there's hundreds of applications for this, and we know that. We don't need to develop everyone right now, but we need the first ones out there in the marketplace. Yep. What I'd like to do now, just crank this up a little bit, mate. Perfect. <laughs> we'll see how the old fella gets on. <laughs> hey, come back here, you mongrels, and turn the bloody thing off! Won't hurt you, you silly old fool. Ah, I'll smash the bloody thing! English Rose Beauty Therapy is about to be renamed Beauty Sensations. Mike sorted out designs for signage and flyers, Denise has got the sign writing underway, and even Peter's on the job. Well, Denise... We've got the flyers now. Remember, you've got to target your market. You've got to think about it. Target your market, Denise. Hey, I've been flat out, mate. I'm telling you, I'm busy. Hot off the press, 2,000 flyers are delivered to local homes that look like the owners may have a little disposable income. And the response is immediate. The appointment book is filling nicely. They've been good appointments, they've been for quite big things, so value-wise it has made the letterbox drop worthwhile. Um, I was hoping for more. We may still just get more and more calls out of that over the next few months. Having someone on staff doing nails instead of bringing in an outside contractor is also working well. It was a valuable piece of advice being able to have somebody here so that when people ring up they can just book in straight away without having to find out whether somebody else is free first to come in. And the new sign? It's going to be very pink and bigger than the one that we've got now so it's going to draw people's attention. I'm hoping that they won't be able to walk by without seeing it. I think it's really exciting for me to move it from English Rose, which was the business that I bought about 17 months ago, to what is essentially me, which is Beauty Sensations. Rod Stewart thought it was all over for his racing driver cooling system when he discovered overseas patents on similar machines. But his lawyer's given the go-ahead for a patent in New Zealand, so with that good news, Rod's off on the trail of more funding. There is government help out there if you are developing a new technology or a new product. What's really good about these grants is it actually makes you sit down and think about the steps you are going to take to get the product to market or get it to the point where it's being evaluated. The great thing about this product is that I can test it on myself first. <laughs> I heated my test room up to 40 degrees and I put the cool shirt on and plugged it into the refrigeration unit. I lasted an hour. I felt quite comfortable the whole time sitting in a 40 degree room with, this, with the shirt on. I was the test jockey that night and it was great. <laughs> Coming up, Beauty Sensations takes on a huge challenge. I feel like Ray Charles. 
You look like a dickhead, mate. <laughs> and can Rod's invention cope with a real road test? Rod Stewart is flat out modifying his race car driver cooling system. He needs to get the machine to prototype so he can get a New Zealand patent. Happily, the government has come to the party. So you got a grant for the business? Yeah, I decided to approach Technology New Zealand and we put the grant application in and went through first time. Perfect. What does the grant enable you to do? Well, we can spend uh, 58000 and we get a third of that back. Um, very welcome money, really. Yep. When can we get it to the market? Uh, we need to work a little bit more on the thermostat. We need to fine-tune the refrigeration unit. Yep. When's it going to happen? Uh, we're looking at January. What I want from you is emergency. We need to get the product done. It will never be perfect in your eyes. You're an inventor, but let's get the one that's going to do the job down there in January. Yep. OK. January's the goal for both prototypes. No, no. Jan January's the deadline, mate. It's not the goal. The it's, deadline. It's the deadline. It will be there in January. With a new name and some smart marketing, Denise is beginning to see the beauty business is not so ugly after all. I feel like um, it's starting to get some momentum and now's a good time to sort of build on that. I'm interested in looking at opening another store, somewhere different, um, and I'm yeah, very keen to talk to Mike and Pete about it. I've got a friend who is keen to come on as an investor uh, and partner. She's got a background in HR, people management type of skills, um, accounting background, that sort of thing. With business just starting to pick up, is it really the right time to look at expanding? One thing's for sure, Peter and Mike will have an answer. Over there, she's done an excellent job. She's painted around the doorway, looks great and pink. She's got a new sign above it. She's got rid of that old flappy thing that was a doorstop. With the exterior looking so good, Peter's work here is almost done. Well, I'm off for my manicure right now. The what? Manicure, mate. What sort of man are you, mate? He's a real I'm a real man. man. So how did the flies go, Denise? Yep, they've gone good. We've got them all out. Have you got repeat business back? We have got, covers? yep, we're starting to get the repeat hey, business it's now. Worked, it's worked yep, then. It's done right. what it's done. Maybe it didn't deliver the numbers that we wanted, but it's definitely done what we were after. But one good marketing campaign won't be enough. I think now we need to start thinking outside the square. If we're not in the right area for those people to come to us, let's just take your business and take it to them. Let's go to the local schools. Old people homes will be definitely a good target market for you to go to. The Many men come in. A lot of men come in. Not so much for this, though. More well, no. for waxing. Personally, I like a pedicure. You know, I like to get my feet done on that, you yep. know? Well, Michael, I think that's an improvement, mate. There's no question you need the anti-aging stuff, mate. And, uh, Denise, you just need to put it on a bit thicker because he is, he uh... He He has got thick skin, to be fair. Oh, it certainly beats working for you for a living. I put some pads on. It's perfectly safe. And you can just nod off on the next there now. I feel like Ray Charles. You look like a dickhead, mate. <laughs> Despite all the distractions, Peter's still got his business head on. What's this about you thinking of opening a second shop? Well, I thought we're starting to get some momentum here, and it's time to look at the future. You really need to have this on rock-solid base before you think of opening another store. I could wait for five years for that rock-solid base, and it's better to be moving forward, it's better to have momentum than not to be. Another store creates a whole lot of problems. Look, I went through it myself when I started expansion. Yeah. I was lucky that I had a good financial bank balance, so I was able to weather the storm. Mm -hmm. I think if you were to attempt it, I think you would sink in the storm. And you're thinking of taking in a partner, I'm led to Possibly. believe as well. Why a partnership? I realise how much extra work it's going to be. And that would yes. help to have somebody who was able to take over part of that management admin role, I guess. A lot of partnerships go hayway. I think very carefully about that. Look at this partnership. Someone's got to carry someone else. He's asleep. I'm doing all the work. Fresh. Unbelievable. Denise is thrilled with the increase in business, and the butcher knows more customers also means more opportunity to sell stuff. Well, I've just finished my beautiful manicure. Mm -hmm. What are you going to product? Are you going to hook me up with now? Well, Peter, what I would suggest for you is to keep those nails looking really good and keep your hands looking nice and soft and smooth and youthful. Yes. Is one of our nice hand lotions. It smells like a vanilla ice cream to be fair. Your pitch was okay but okay. you could pick it up. Yep. You know, a little bit more sassy. Ooh. Okay. Have you tried this? 
it smells lovely, and to top it off, we've got 10% off it today. So not only are you going to get yeah, a good right product. Out, Look, stick to the sausages. We're out of here. It's D-Day for our struggling inventor and manufacturer. Rod's electric water bottle sat around his workshop for a couple of years, but Mike saw the commercial potential in using it to keep race car drivers cool. At last, they're about to road test the finished prototype, but first there's time to pick the brains of Shane Drake, the owner of the company that sells the cooling system drivers currently use. What's different about your system, Rod? What we're offering is something that's a lot smaller, a lot lighter, all they need to do is turn it on when they get in the car and they're away cooling. Where do you see your system lining up price-wise? Because that's, that's the key to, to it to me. The retail price could end up around the six to $800 mark. From my side of it and selling, that's a step in, in, in the right direction compared to the system that we're currently using because that's 1350 bucks, including taxes. How big do you think the market is? And there's thousands of people that race cars, so if we can get something that's actually cost-effective, more user-friendly, low-maintenance, then we can make the system a more of a, a mainstream product in motorsport. If I got, say, the first run of production units together, uh, how long do you think it would take for you to start selling them? If you come to me tomorrow and say, look, I can get 10 of these units up and going, we could start within a week. We don't need to spend money on, on advertising because, you know, the people are here, the motorsport people are here. OK, well, let's watch what happens today. So the market is ready and waiting. It all comes down to whether Rod's machine will work. Whoa, here I am standing in the pits, this is the moment. Fingers crossed, thumbs crossed, oh, it's all good, it's so exciting. So how did no. it go? That was good, mate. I mean, it's a lot harder this session than... Uh, the racing driver water cooler has passed with flying colours, and that's only one of many possible applications for Rod's invention. As far as he's concerned, it's as good as a podium finish. I mean, I'm just amazed that I kept the thermotherapy unit in a cardboard box with all my notes and circuit diagrams for two and a half years, and then when I dug it out to show them, they just said, go for it, you know, and four months later, I'm out testing it on race cars. Amazing. Revved up by the whole experience, Rod's also redoubling work on his top secret project. He's just mad for inventing, so chances are we haven't heard the last from this can-do kiwi. Denise Rogers bought a rundown beauty clinic in Manarewa that struggled for business. Peter and Mike put a rocket under her to change the name, get new signs, brighten up the premises, and start a marketing drive. Now all the efforts paying off. It's been a really big impact. People are noticing their signs. They've got real appeal to women, but the men are noticing them as well. And they're not just noticing. Those men and women are buying as well. When they talked about product sales, you know, making sure you've got product on your shelves. If you haven't got it on your shelves, you can't sell it. And so we're making sure the shelves look really well stocked. And the product is going, definitely. And we've got experienced part-time staff member now doing late nights and Saturdays, and we really need her. We'll be looking for another full-timer who will be a junior, and that's really to make sure that the phone gets answered and all the other stuff that we don't have time to do that needs to be done will get done. Denise has taken Peter's advice and decided against getting a partner or opening a second clinic. Right now, everything's rosy for beauty sensations. Overall sales have improved, definitely. February up by about 5,000 and March up by double, basically. So what's that, 100% increase on March last year. Next time in a mad business, a Hamilton furniture manufacturer. Everything at the end of the day is, is on the line. We don't want to get into a situation where we have to lose it all. In life, there comes a time when you've got to put your balls in the vice. You've got to sell to them. 20% is a bullshit number. And there's more. A comedy booking agent whose business is a joke. So with this gig though, Andre, are we going to get paid this time? Who doesn't take kindly to advice. That's your solution. solution. It is. If I'm not going to be a comic, 
then there's no point to me running this business. There is a difference between selling sausages and selling a comedy show. I mean, if I was a sausage, then I'd want the mad butcher to sell me. Beautiful! <laughs> Logan Swan, one of the Vodafone warriors, he's just come back from England and his fiancé is a beauty beauty fisher. A beautician. I right, start again. Let's get this off around. Let's get the f***ing odd man out. You can't have every f***ing Andy. You got me f***ing charming chest. My wife won't be happy about that. <laughs> no, anybody can f***ing see on TV. Okay.